remove any distraction, Lord God, anything that would hinder, Lord God, us from staying focused on your word, Lord. And Father, I just thank you and I praise you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do, Lord God. Father, I just ask that you would just have your way tonight in this Bible study, Lord God. Father, touch our hearts and our minds, Lord God. Prepare our hearts to receive your engrafted word that's able to save our very souls, Lord. And Father, I ask that you would continue, Lord God, to build your God, build your kingdom, build your people, Lord God. Touch their hearts and minds, Lord God. Father, and I just thank you right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, God, as we receive your word, Lord God. Father, we welcome you into this Bible study. We welcome you into the place where we're residing right now as we tune into this Bible study, Lord. Father, I ask that you would continue to touch the lines, Lord, that we won't have any distractions, Lord, that there will be no uh, cutoffs on this line, Lord. Father, we know that sometimes the internet acts finicky, God, but Father, I know that you have all power, Lord, and Father, you can keep the connection flowing, Lord God, without any interruptions, Lord. And Father, I bind up every demonic spirit that would try to come against this Bible study right now in the name of Jesus. There is no weapon that is formed against us and your people, Lord God, that shall prosper, Lord. And Father, I just thank you right now, God, as we lift you up, Lord God, as we magnify your most holy and righteous name, Lord, as we continue to give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord, knowing that we can do nothing without you, Lord God. Father, and I just thank you right now in Jesus' name, God. Father, if there's any depressed that's on the line, God, Father, touch their minds right Right now, Lord. Father, help their minds to be focused on you, God, because in your word you said that you would keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on you, God. And Father, I loose the power of your Holy Spirit right now, God. I loose healing right now in Jesus' name. I lose peace right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. I lose wholeness right now in Jesus' name. I lose faith right now in Jesus' name. Because, Father, you said whatever we loose on this earth shall be loosed in the heavens, God. And I thank you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Words of Wisdom Bible Study. Hallelujah. Welcome each one of you. And I'm so glad you were able to tune in tonight. I know we had missed last week, but praise be to God, we're pushing forward tonight. Hallelujah. I don't feel the very best, but praise be to God. Hallelujah. He is, hallelujah, my healer. And I receive healing right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So as we get out your Bibles, whether it's your electronic devices, whether it's your paper Bible, whether it's your Android your device, your iPhone, your iPad, whatever your love letter is on. I encourage you to get it out. And as you get out your love letter from your Heavenly Father, I ask that you would get out paper and pencil or paper and pen so that you can write down what the Spirit of the living God may say to you tonight. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. He may answer um, a prayer that you've already sent up to Him. He may give you an interpretation of a dream that you've had. You just never know how God is going to move. Hallelujah. Because I allow Him to have His way, and I don't try to hinder His Holy Spirit. I allow Him to have His way, so you don't know how He's going to move. But we just know that God is still in the miracle business. He's still in the moving business. He's still in the prayer answering business. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So as we hold up our Bibles, and we're going to make the declaration to ourselves and to the spiritual realm, hallelujah, that this is my Bible, and I'm holding up my app, iPad, that this is my Bible, and I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. Tonight I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert and my heart is receptive and i will never be the same never 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 be the same in jesus name hallelujah glory to god god is an awesome god god is an awesome god hallelujah so tonight i know we we've been doing acts but tonight we're going to go to i'm just going to read it's going to be a few different um verses that i'm going to read from uh several different books so what you might want to do is just write these books and verses down so that you can go back and read upon it and reflect upon it and even tune in when I upload it to YouTube so that you can um, follow along and you can go back over what we're going to talk about tonight. Amen? Hallelujah. So as you take out your Bibles and as you turn to Hebrews chapter 6 
And what we're going to talk about tonight, um, we're going to go back to Acts of God's willing next week. But what we're going to talk about tonight is guarding your mind. Because this is the time of year where the enemy tries to run havoc in our minds and on our minds. Because he's trying to make us feel like we're worthless or because we didn't get that special gift or because we didn't give that special gift that somebody might have wanted or that we might want it to give to somebody he makes us feel like we're useless like we're nothing so we've got to guard our minds and the definition of guard and you we've got to know what the definition of guard is because when you guard your mind when you guard something it means to watch over or shield from danger or harm. And our minds are so valuable. Our minds are more valuable than any goal or any material that's on this earth. Our minds are very valuable. So we need to keep a watch over our minds to prevent it from escaping, which means to keep it from going into our carnal nature, which means thinking worldly, thinking things that are unrighteous or unholy. So we've got to constantly guard our minds. But when you think about it, when you think about in the natural sense, how guarding is anything that's being guarded is because it's valuable. There is some type of treasure. There's some type of value that has been placed on it. So when you think about the president of the United States, he has guards. When you think about the queen and king, you see that they have guards. When you think about the Pentagon, it is guarded. When you think about Buckingham Palace, it has guards. I worked at the National Security Agency, and you had to had to have a specific credential in order to be able to get in there. So your ID had to be had to be coded in such a way that you would be allowed in there. So there was guards there to prevent you from entering into the building. So anything that's valuable is going to have guard has have a guard on it. So we want to make sure that we guard our minds because our minds are valuable. Our minds are tr are, are a treasure that cannot be replaced. But see, God also warns us of people whose minds are irreplaceable with the word of God. And that's the couple of scriptures I'm going to give you first. And then we're going to talk about how to guard your mind. Because we got to, in order to guard your mind, you must know how to guard your mind and what to use in order to guard your mind. Because we can't actually see our mind. So just like I'm holding up my glass case, I can see my glass case and I can guard my glass case because I can see it and I can feel it. It's tangible. But our mind minds can't be seen hallelujah but we're going to learn how tonight to guard our minds to keep the enemy from uh taking our minds or causing our minds to wander into places that it should not be so when we go to hebrews chapter 6 i'm going to start with verse 4 and i'm just going to read a, a couple of verses and i'm reading the new king james version and this is what God says about people's minds who are irreplaceable with his word. He says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. If they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the son of God and put him to an open shame so in other words these people he's saying it is impossible for those who have were once enlightened or who had the full knowledge of God's truth and have tasted of the heavenly gift in other words they have experienced the gift of eternal life and were made partakers or participants of the Holy Ghost and they have tasted the good word of God. Guys, how many know that God's word is good? It's, it's good. It's, it's wisdom in God's word. God's word has the ability to heal. It has the ability to sanctify. It has the ability to lift you up. It has the ability to create peace in your life. So to taste it, the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. And how many know that in order to experience the powers of the world to come, it's only through the power of God. It's only through the uh, Holy Spirit. And then it says, if they shall fall away to renew or to restart them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify 
to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So they constantly, in their minds, they're continuously crucifying the Son of God in their minds. So there are several different passages that the Bible talks about of impossibility. We know that the blood of animals, it was impossible for the blood of animals to take away our sin, Hebrews 10.4. That's the reason why God um, sent Jesus to die for our sins because animals could not do that. Then in Hebrews 6.18 says tells us that it's impossible for God to lie. And we also know that it is impossible to please God without faith. So here we're saying that it's impossible for those who were once enlightened, who had the full knowledge of God's truth and tasted or experienced the gift of eternal life and were made participants of the Holy Spirit. And they tasted the good word of God and the powers to come to renew them or restart them or resume after interruption unto repentance. It says that it was, it's impossible. So then we go to 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 and 11. And then it tells us, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions or misunderstanding or an illusion that they should believe a lie. So we're going to encounter people like this. We're going to encounter people even during our Christmas celebration time. You're going to encounter people in your family or your friends or at the uh, Christmas party you may go to or the Christmas dinner that you may go to. You're going to encounter people that have a strong delusion that has been sent from God because they chose not to walk in newness of life. They chose not to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So they have been deceived and they're capable of deceiving other people because of what they have experienced and what they have been implanted within themselves because they are unrighteous because they are wicked and see God did not do this to these people because he was trying to be mean to them but see these people did not guard their hearts they did not guard their minds even though God was sending them the information necessary even though he was sending them his holy spirit even though he sent Jesus to die for them they have chose to walk their own path they had chose to to create their own way in life so to speak what they think they are creating they're actually following after satan but this is what i want you to think about if our minds were not so valuable, why would Satan, who is our enemy, why would he constantly go after our mind, go after our peace, go after our joy? Because he knows that our minds are valuable. And that's where we're hearing the uh, God's voice. We're hearing God's voice through our minds. We're feeling him in our heart and in our spirit, but we're also hearing him. What we're feeling in our hearts and in our spirit is resonating in our minds. So that's why he's often always going after our minds because he's trying to get our minds off of the truth, off of God. He's trying to get our minds so bogged down in the cares of this world that we're unable to focus on the truth of God in order to apply God's word to our life. And that's the only way we can be victorious is by applying God's word to our life and then walking therein what we have applied. So we know that Satan is the father of lies. He's a liar. He's a, he's a deceiver. He's deceptive. He's always trying to get us to walk away from God. He's always trying to get our minds. God said he will keep us in perfect peace. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. How do we keep our mind stayed on him? How do we guard our, our minds? How do we keep our minds from focusing on the worldly things? By making sure that we're watching 
the right things by making sure that nothing goes into our eye gate, into our eyes that will call, that would lead us astray. Making sure that we're protecting our ear gate, making sure that nothing goes into our ears that's gonna uh, uh, stain our walk with the Lord. It's gonna cause our minds to wander. So how do we guard our minds? Second Timothy chapter two. You can turn there if you want, or you can just write it down and go back and reflect upon it. But Second Timothy chapter two. We guard our mind by filling it with the word of God. That is reading and studying his word. We have to read his word out loud because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And when you read God's word out loud, it is building you up in the most holy faith. When you hear it out loud, it just does something to your spirit. It causes your spirit man to be fed. It causes you to start believing more and more what you're reading. That's how you were able to know your name is by constantly hearing your name, hearing your parents call your name, hearing the teachers call your name, hearing other people call your name. And then you begin to realize, Oh, they're talking about me. That's my name. So that's how faith is. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you'll gravitate to it, the more you'll hold on to it. And the more you are activated and walk in it in your life. So second Timothy chapter two, Verse 15, 15 and 16, we're going to read. Let me get to that. Second uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker Who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so we got to study to show ourselves approved unto god a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth then it tells us but shun or reject profane which is disrespectful things and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness so in other words we need to reject Anything that's disrespectful and vain babblings are things are people that are constantly talking, 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 and talking fast. That does not really generate or lead to anything that is nutritious for your spirit or for your mind. But they're just talking fast. A lot of times you hear, if you've ever been to an auction and an auctioneer is uh, saying what the price of something is and he's talking really really fast and you've got to listen diligently because if you don't listen diligently and pay close attention you could uh enter into a contract into a amount that you can't afford or you did not want to pay and then you're up the creek without a paddle because then you entered into this verbal contract and you're going to have to pay it so be very careful when you're talking to people and you hear them talking fast because they could try to lead you astray the bible tells us to reject those things reject those pointless babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness so when those negative thoughts that are not profitable those thoughts that enter your mind that are fruitless that are unproductive that are seductive those things will lead you away from god those things we have to cast down those things and bring them into the obedience in a, of Christ Jesus by the word of God. Then Psalms 37, 30 and 31 says, The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talks judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. So we guard our mind by allowing God's word, by getting into his word, speaking his word, because it says the mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom. How do you speak wisdom? Wisdom comes from being in a close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, being in a relationship with him, knowing what his word says. And then it said, and his tongue talks of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. That's how we get God's word in our heart. He says to constantly read his word study his word we ask the lord to hide his word in our heart that we might not sin against him and the reason we're asking him to hide his word in our heart is because 
out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in your heart is going to come out through your mouth. So we've got to hide God's word in our heart. And God said he's written his word on the tables of our heart. But there are so many people who deny God's existence, deny that Jesus is the Christ, deny that he is the Savior. And see, those people are rejecting what God has already instilled within them. And because they've done this, that's the reason why he said he will send them a strong Strong delusion. He will send them um, uh, information, so to speak, that he's going to download to them, download to their mind, download to their spirit, where since they want to believe a lie, they will run fast track after that lie. So his word, he says, none of our steps shall slide. And why won't they slide? Because The person has been spending time with God. You have been spending time with God. I've been spending time with God, reading, studying, and communing. That means communicating with God. And it's going to show in your thoughts. It's going to show in your action. It's going to show in the words that you speak. That's why we have to be so careful that we don't constantly say, that we don't say those negative things like something is killing me because you're hurting, you're saying it's killing you because what you're actually doing is... The enemy is feeding you those things and you're speaking death over your body. You're speaking death over your life. So we've got to constantly remember to always speak life over your life, over your body. Psalms 19.9 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So how do we guard our minds? Hide the word of God in your heart so that we won't sin against him. Because God's word will lead you into all truth and everlasting life. See, scripture can't be compared to anything on this earth because there's nothing on this earth that can equal the scripture. And scripture is the word of God. Scripture is Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the word of God. He is the incarnate word of God. So scripture is very valuable to us. That's why you should never, ever, ever be destructive to the word of God, to your Bible. You should always treat it as valuable because nothing on earth can compare to the scripture, what God has given us. Jesus shed his own blood in order to make sure that we had the word of God in order that we would know who God is in order that we could be reconciled to God in order that we could have eternal life. Scripture, God's word, provides joy. It provides peace. It provides eternal life. It gives us eternal life by knowing what his word says because it is a road map. God's word is a road map for us. So God and I thought, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, and this is Paul is talking here and he says he's letting us know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ so this is what it's saying for the weapons that means the the things that we use to fight in war the guns the cannons the explosives for the weapons of our warfare or our fight or our war or our conflict are not carnal, which means they're not of the flesh. These things, what we must use to fight in the spiritual realm, we can't use the things that we fight in the natural realm. We can't use those things in the spiritual realm. So you can't take guns and knives and explosives into the spiritual realm. So we got to use the word of God because it's not carnal. It's not of the flesh, but they're mighty, which means they're enormous. They're massive, completely through and in God. 
to the pulling down of strongholds. What are strongholds? Strongholds are things that lock you up, that bound you up, that tie you up, that keep you from being able to move forward. What are those strongholds? Those strongholds are anything that causes depression, anything that causes sadness, anything that causes stress, anything that causes you not to be able to be fruitful in Christ Jesus, anything that causes you not to be able to move forward in your calling. Those are things that are locked. Those are things that are strongholds. Those are things that the enemy uses to try to keep our minds bogged down, to try to keep our minds in a vice grip, to cause us to have those headaches and those kinds of things. They're locks. They're strongholds. Paul says, cast down those things, casting down imaginations. That means those thoughts, those dreams, those things of, that come to your mind that do not line up with the word of God. Those are the imaginations. And then he says, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What are those high things? Anything that the enemy brings to your mind that tries to tell you that God's word is less than what it is. That tells you that you're less in God than what who you really are, that tries to tell you that you're not a child of God, that tries to tell you that you're not um, walking in the spirit, that tries to tell you that you're not strong in Christ Jesus, that tries to tell you that you're not a conqueror in Christ Jesus, that tries to tell you that you're not more than a conqueror, that tries to tell you that you're not victorious. These are the things that try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Why? Because God tells us that we are more than conquerors. He tells us that we are victorious. He tells us that we can walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He tells us that all we got to do is allow his Holy Spirit to be activated in our life and we will be able to walk in newness of life. And then Paul says, and bring into captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. He said, every negative, unrighteous, unholy, unlawful thought. He said, bring it captive to the obedience of Christ because only Jesus has the power to be able to, to grab hold of those things and to restrain those things and to keep those things from causing damage to us, our minds and our spirits. So we've got to bring those things into the obedience of Christ captive bring those captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. So it's something that we have to do. We have to willfully give it to over to Christ because see, there's some people that these thoughts come into their mind and we can't prevent every thought from coming into our minds. But what we can prevent is thinking about those things that come into our minds. When those things come into your mind that are unrighteous, unholy, that are ungodly, we have to immediately bring it to the captivity of Christ. Bring it to his obedience. Take it to Christ. Take it to the throne of grace and leave it at Christ's feet. Leave it at the feet of God. We got to leave it there. But there's so many people that want to entertain those thoughts. The enemies tells them that you're not saved. So then they're sitting up there thinking about, well, maybe I'm not saved because I did such and such. But all you have to do is repent and ask Jesus to forgive you for whatever the, it is that the enemy is trying to hold over your head. That he's trying to uh, cause you to be bogged down with it. That he's trying to cause you to be um, locked down with whatever it was that you was, had done or was supposed to have done. Because God tells us that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, after the spirit of God. So if you are in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation. So whatever that thing is that you did, all you got to do is repent. God is willing and able to forgive you from and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So you can just go to him and ask him to forgive you. So that way... The enemy can't hold that thing over your head, not legally hold that thing over your head. Only God's word is powerful enough to ward off the attacks of Satan in your minds. That's why we need the sword of the spirit. We need the word of God. We need the helmet of salvation. We need the weapons that God has issued us so that we can fight against the enemy. God's peace is only manifested if we keep our minds on him. He's able to keep our hearts. He's able to keep your minds through Christ Jesus. 
the enemy will come to you and he'll tell you that you're not saved. When we get saved, there's not a special article of clothing that we have in the natural that will let people know that we're saved. In the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm can see that we're saved because God has put a seal on each and every person that has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. He's put a marking on us so the enemy knows those that are saved. Before you got saved, the enemy never told you that you were not saved because he had no reason to. But now that you're saved, he comes to you with that lie. And then when you uh, run into uh, depression or something happens that stress you out or depresses you, then he'll throw it up. See, I told you you wasn't saved, but you are still saved. You just a little weak at the time, at the moment. That's the reason why we're always supposed to stay in direct communication, direct fellowship with the, with the Lord so that we can have the strength that we need and be in fellowship with those who are strong in Christ Jesus so that they can pray for you so that they can keep you covered, so that they can encourage you. And if you don't have anyone to encourage you, you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. you got to pick your own self up and tell your own self that you're more than a conqueror. Tell your own self that you are a child of God. Tell your own self that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Tell your own self that you're healed. Tell your own self that you're made completely whole. You've got to talk to your own self. Lift your own self up. Encourage your own self. Thank you, Lord. So, you got to know God's word to rightly divide it. That's how you guard your thoughts. Meditate on it. Meditate on God's word. Keep God's word on your tongue. Keep it in your mouth at all times. Remember, he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Remember to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Because your actions reveal your thoughts. Don't cling to the thoughts that do not conform to the life and teachings of Christ. Those things that Christ has not taught us, don't cling to those thoughts. When we think about the Apostle Paul, he did not walk according to the flesh or the worldly desires. He could have continued to walk on the path that he was on where he was killing Christians, where he was acting as a Pharisee, where he was doing all those things, but he chose to follow Christ Jesus. We need to also conquer our flesh. So guard your heart this holiday season or this Christmas season. Guard your heart. Guard your mind. Guard what you say. Guard your thinking. Remember, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. So that's all I have for tonight. If there are any questions or comments before I bring my pastor on. Or with family and friends uh, this Christmas holiday, just remember to always, always display Christ. Irregardless of how ugly they may get to you, try to always maintain your cool. Try to always maintain um, the testimony that He lives in you and He's working through you. And don't overexert yourself. Don't overspend. You know, allow the love of Christ. That is the most valuable gift that you could give anybody. And if you think about it, the only gift that you can really take to heaven is relationship. So by you being a witness to others and that person receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and they continue on to the very end, when we get to heaven, you'll see those people that you witness to. Those people that continued on in Christ Jesus. And that is the most valuable thing that you could ever give anyone. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for each person that's on tonight, Lord God. I thank you, God, that they did not think it robbery, Lord, to come on tonight, Lord God. That they set aside in their schedule, wherever they were, Lord, to tune in, Lord, to hear just what you had to say and what you wanted to declare to them tonight, Lord. Father, I ask that you would touch their minds, Lord God. Help them to keep their minds stayed on you, Lord, so that you could keep them in that perfect peace, Lord. Father, I thank you for accepting 
extending your joy and for giving your joy to them, God, because you said the joy that you give is not as the world gives, no, nor the peace and the joy that you give is not as the world gives, you said that you give to us, because what you give to us, Lord, you don't take back, as with the world, they take things back from us that they have given to us, Lord, and the world can only be happy if everything is going exactly as they have planned or exactly as they want, Lord, but we can be happy in you knowing that you have our best interests at heart, knowing that you see our future, Lord, that you know our past, you know our present, and you know what's going to happen in our future, Lord, because you said that you know the thoughts that you have towards us, thoughts of peace, thoughts of hope to give us a future and a hope at expected end. And Father, I just thank you for that right now, Lord, that even when we lay down tonight, Lord, we can rest assured knowing that you're watching over us, Lord God, because you neither sleep nor do you slumber, Lord, but you're always watching over us, Lord. Father, keep us safe, God. Keep that which you've entrusted to us, Lord God. Keep it safe from the enemy's hand, Lord. Continue to build us up in the most holy faith, Lord, as we continue to put our trust and hope in you, Lord, knowing that you are soon to come back, Lord God. And Father, I just thank you right now, God, for healing your people, God, both physically, mentally, and spiritually, Lord God. And Father, I give you glory, honor, and praise until we meet again in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless everyone. Thank you so much. Love you. If you need me, just give shoot me a text. Give me a call. Amen. God bless. Good night. This is the most critical part of the Bible study, of you hearing the word of God and being able to apply it to your life. This is the part where I introduce you to our Lord and Savior. So for anyone who would like to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, this is what I would like for you to pray. This is prayer for your salvation, to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Repeat these words, Lord, I am a sinner and I need a savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and you rose on the third day and ascended back to heaven. I know I am unable to live this life apart from you. And I need the indwelling of your Holy Spirit to teach me, to guide me into all truth. Help me to live holy, upright, and be faithful to you. I invite you to be Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for saving me and writing my name in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. If you've prayed that prayer, then your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. I encourage you to tune in each Tuesday to our Bible study so that you can grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and the one who you now serve. And I welcome you into the family of God.